Greetings, Internet. I'm Richard Neal. This is my wall of derelict technologies. And I'm naked, so this must be a naked blog. Naked blogs are when you film yourself naked, not in the context of being sexy, because me, but rather in the context of trying to be open, raw, and as much yourself as you possibly can be. This is why I'm in this environment tonight, because all of these objects are mine, and they're all part of my life, so I sort of extend into this room. This is, this is as me as one can be. This is courtesy of uh, the always lovely Trisha Hirschberger, who does the Naked Truth series, and if you you want to check out her videos, I suggest you do. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. And she has asked the question of all of her Naked Army, what YouTube show would you like to see on television? Which puts me at a loss, because I don't watch television. Unless it's on Netflix, or possibly a DVD. And I breathe very loud. Regardless, uh, how do I talk about a topic that I have no opinion on? I don't. So, let me just make a few points here, talking about the difference between television and YouTube. To give you a context, in the year 1894, that's 1894, a fellow named Fred Otts, or is it Ott? It's Ott. I believe it's Ott. Fred Ott, the first ever moving picture of a human being sneezing. Okay, this was a big thing because at the time no one had seen moving pictures. We're talking more than a hundred years ago. This was a huge thing. You could still find this video online. Six seconds long. Now, in 2006, 112 years later, what did we have on the internet that was a huge thing? A panda bear sneezing. Yeah. And the reason this was a big thing, of course, is because watching videos on the internet were kind of a novelty in and of itself, and there wasn't all that much competition, so everybody watched this panda bear sneezing, which you can still see online, and I don't see what the big deal is, but then I probably, probably would have thought a lot more of a, a human being sneezing if I had never seen it before. Point I'm making here. Film to a certain extent, comes from theater, which has been around for a very, very long time, thousands of years. Then film in and of itself, some people say that the first true feature film was Birth of a Nation, which was filmed a hundred years ago, or released a hundred years ago, just over a hundred years ago. Then you have television, which was invented well, no, my bad. Then you have radio, 1920s, after World War II, or after World War I, beginning World War II, radio was a huge thing. And then right before World War II starts, you have the birth of television, and the war actually delays the popularization of television till it's over, because production goes into other things. So, now you've had all of these sort of things just happen. Then, around the 80s, I'm not sure exactly when, you had home video, which this was a big thing. Suddenly, you could own a, a piece of film. You could own moving film with sound, and you could take it home and watch it on demand. This was a huge thing. Now here we have YouTube, which is not that old of a medium. And it's not truly a medium. It's, it's streaming is the medium. And YouTube is a uh, user-generated medium, as opposed to 
uh, more like Netflix, which is sort of the cable of streaming. Understand it that way. Now, when you look at it, streaming's not that old. The idea of a user-generated platform is not that old. So, when you talk about the difference between YouTube, the streaming medium that's user-generated, and television, you have to understand that YouTube is still in a major development phase. It is starting to get the attention of, or has gotten the attention of major companies. There is some spillover between YouTube and television and YouTube and film. These things are happening, and they're happening in a very organic, not a very forced manner. Ask me this question again in ten years. You know, maybe five years. That, that's kind of the thing. That which is on YouTube generally tends to be shorter than what is on uh, network television. But, you know, it wasn't always so. Things on network television used to be 15 minutes long. Things on the radio used to be 15 minutes long. Quite frankly, what you used to have in movie theaters was what were called serials. Shorts that would play before the movie. Well, those th serials were, I mean, the TV shows of their day because they were an episodic, cut into parts, you saw them over a length of time, and then, you know, what happened is uh, radio did the same thing where you had these shows. Why is it a show? It's on the radio. You can't see it. You can only hear it. But they took the name from existing media, and it was episodic, and then television came along. Well, what did you have at the birth of film? You had all these short little videos, which was all they could produce at the time. Same thing you saw at the birth of YouTube. And there was always uh, something that existed kind of like YouTube on film, which was the shorts and the newsreels and the smaller segments. And then that, that changed to, to news blurbs on the radio and television and skit shows like Saturday Night Live. I mean, back then you put a show together, total 22 minutes, or however long it was, 22 minutes is a half hour program with the commercials removed. But then now you have YouTube where you can just do that skit, and it doesn't matter how long it is, and you don't have to arrange it into 22 minute intervals, which makes your life a lot easier. So YouTube and this kind of streaming medium is taking up the place that those things used to have. And that's kind of where that's going. So YouTube is, is this sort of proving ground for a lot of uh, more modern talent. And I think in the, the future years you're going to see maybe the big time studios looking at YouTube and saying, is there a star on there we can pull who already has kind of a charisma? We can see what their work is like. We can see what their longevity is like. And maybe bring them onto television or onto film. But you'll see that after a while. That's one of those things. I mean, it was a big thing when I was in college, the early 2000s. People were saying, actors, actresses, please stop getting cosmetic surgery because you all look the same now. We want something unique. We want something the audience hasn't seen before. We don't want cookie cutter people on film anymore. This is YouTube. Most of the people on YouTube are real people. We haven't had plastic surgery. I know I haven't, although I certainly could use some. Uh, they're, they're saying they could get rid of my double chin now. Hmm? What do you think? I'll tell you what I think. I think the lights in here are just a little too bright. That's what I think. I don't know what I can do about that, but I'll try something later. Anyway, that's the thing about YouTube. The thing to remember, it's a new medium. I mean, in the length of human history, Film is not that old. We've made it a full-on part of our culture, and it wasn't that, you know, a hundred years before. A hundred years before, full-length films were, were kind of a novelty. Nowadays, you know, there's 600 of them a year. Major films, anyway. And I'm still breathing loud. So, that's my take on the situation. Hope you've learned a little bit. Hope I can learn to control my breathing a little bit. 
and I'm gonna have to change out these light bulbs or something. This is just way too bright. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing. Do these lights work? Should I change out the bulbs, get something a little less? I mean, seriously, this is just crazy. Anyway, yes. Um, and Trisha likes to link to her videos, so if you check out her service, or her blogs, and whatever have you, you may be inspired to do one of these of your own. Trisha, if you've watched this far, yes, you may link to this video. I've been talking too long and have other things to do. So, peace out.